everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Dreamy Tech Dreamy Bot L10S Ultra. This is a robot vacuum cleaner and mop combo with a self emptying base as well as a self cleaning base for the mop pads, giving you truly full automated cleaning. I did receive this sample directly from Dreamy Tech, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging right here. This thing looks amazing. Great graphic on the side here, going over some of the key features for this particular vacuum. Look at that self-emptying base, self-cleaning, all of that right on the front with our clean and dirty water tanks there. Same graphic on the other side. And then we're back to the beginning of the box. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up we have our user guide and manual, complete with setup instructions, everything you need to know to use your new RoboVac, how to maintain it, get everything set up, nice overview, charts, diagrams. They also have their customer service and contact information right there for you. Next, you'll find our two mopping pads, side cleaning brush. We have a nice cleaning tool for the vacuum. We have another cleaning brush here with a little pop out that we can use to cut as needed. Any sort of tangles, nice white power cord that matches our unit, an extra vacuum bag. We have one 10.1 ounce, 300 milliliter, multi-surface floor cleaner right here with instructions how to use and get that set up and installed. We have the vacuum itself. We'll come back and look at that in a minute. And then lastly, we have our self emptying and our cleaning and refilling base. Let's look at this in more detail. Here's a top down view of your home base right here. So we have three different control buttons and we can open up the top lid to reveal our clean water tank and our dirty water tank. They easily lift up and out so you can empty and refill as needed. And you'll notice in the very middle, we have a slot here to install the provided cleaning solution. The clean water tank has a max indicator fill line right here and just a little clip that you open to refill as needed. Dirty water tank, very similar, but you'll notice we don't have any indicator lines because this is again for our dirty water, but we do have a little float right here when it's full. Don't forget inside the lid, you might miss it, but they have their quick start guide built right in with their customer service and contact information and your setup instructions as well as the different control options for the three buttons on the unit, the leave button, the clean button, and the dry button. Looking at the very front, you'll notice up at the top, we have the Dreamy logo and branding. We have an indicator light. Then we have our auto empty dustbin collection right here. This just pops off. This is a really cool cover. I really like how it's designed. And inside we have our vacuum bag. Don't forget, they do provide a second one for you. And then this just gently, goes right back on like so. So it just pops off and pops on. Nice silvery accent to the white. And then looking down here, we have our charging contacts. We have our water spout. This is gonna be what refills the clean water tank for us on the unit itself when it's mopping. And then we have our mop pad cleaning area down below right here with those textured dots as it's moving around cleaning and drying everything for us. You'll notice we have some grip right here for the wheel so it won't slip as it makes its way up to charge. And on both sides, we have our suction here to remove the contents of the dustbin. Here's a look at the left side profile. Here's a look at the right side profile. Here's a look at the back side of the unit with the toggle on and off switch here, warning sticker. We have our power plug down here and an air vent. And here's the bottom of the unit with additional product information. And we have four feet that are gonna provide nice grip and traction for the base station to rest on your floor. Now it's time for a vacuum close up. Looking at the top, we have our three physical control buttons buttons right here, LiDAR navigation module with a silver accent, Dreamy's logo and branding. Taking a look at the very front of the vacuum, you'll notice it says AI action. So we have AI plus 3D navigation with this vacuum. So we have some sensors on the sides. The bumper, there's the play for the bumper. Here's a look at the backside, remove before use. This is our water inlet so it can refill for mopping. This is where the contents are gonna come out from the dustbin that self empties. 
Really nice design. Let's look at it now from the very bottom. Omnidirectional wheel. We have our cliff sensors. This is where we're gonna attach the side cleaning brush. Here's our main brush roller right there. Look at that design, really cool. It's all rubber, there's no bristles on this one. Product info right here, two spring-loaded drive wheels. And this is where we're gonna attach the mopping attachments. Now let's go ahead, let's get this thing set up. So, on the bottom side, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna install our side cleaning brush right here. It's just got a square mount, so you can line it up however you want, and it'll just snap right in place. If you need to remove it, just gently pull to remove. And then we have our two mop pads, and they're just gonna slide in. So just line them up, and they just automatically snap. They have a little magnet in them. And there we go, we now have the mopping module installed. We've removed the bumper protectors there, and a sticker on the back side. Now you're ready to charge it up. So we have the vacuum connected to the home base and it's charging. We also have the Mi Home app downloaded on our mobile device. It's free for iOS and Android devices. Once you have it opened up and you sign in, this is the screen you're gonna be at where you can view all of your connected devices. In this case, we have quite a few Dreamy products connected. So we're gonna add our new vacuum right here by selecting the plus icon in the top right hand corner. We're just gonna choose add a device. So we can pick and choose right here which device we want to add. So we're gonna go all the way down to robot vacuum. And then we can pick and choose our model here. So look at all of the different devices that they have. But in our case, we're gonna choose the DreamyBot L10S Ultra. And now we need to reset the device. So we gotta press and hold the spot cleaning and home button for three seconds. Waiting for the network configuration. We got the voice prompt. So we can check confirmed and select next. Now we need to enter our Wi-Fi information. Please keep in mind at this step, it only supports 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. So choose your network, enter your password and select next. Now it's gonna work on adding the device. It's already connected to it. It's sending a message to the device and it's gonna work on connecting to the network. Just got a voice prompt. The network was connected successfully. It's charging. Everything's done, so we can select done. Now we can choose our room, recommended rooms. So you have a couple options here. Let's just choose um, living room. Next, we can name it. Let's leave it its current name. Everything was added successfully, so we can get started right here. We have a prompt too to update the app. So let's go ahead, let's get everything updated. All right, so our app's been updated. Let's enter into our new RoboVac by selecting it. And we should have a couple of permissions here, maybe even a firmware update if we have that option. I'm not seeing it yet, but we have tips and tricks to organize our home. If we have pets in our home, we can start the experience. We can do a mapping run right here. You could start that right then and there. Currently we have 13% battery and everything is charging. Let me make sure that everything's up to date. So we do have a firmware update available, so let's get it updated. Our firmware's up to date, so let's go ahead, let's look at all of the settings here really quickly. So I'll go back out to the home screen, we'll enter into the device right here. In the top right hand corner we have three dots. This is all of our settings. We can view our cleaning history once we have one populated and we use it. We can schedule a cleanup right here, so pick and choose hour, minute, day, week, you get the idea what mode that you want. So global cleaning, you wanna set up a particular map, start time, when you want it to repeat, you get the idea there. Next, we have our carpet cleaning settings, so we can turn carpet recognition on or off, then we can choose to either avoid the carpet, or we can choose to have it clean the carpet but not mop the carpet, and supposedly, the mop pads actually raise up to keep it from actually making any contact with your carpet. There's also carpet boost. If enabled, the robot will clean the carpet with maximum suction power. Definitely recommend that if you're gonna be using this to clean carpet. You wanna get the most out of your RoboVac to be able to lift all the dirt and dust out of the carpet threads. Next, we have our preferences. Daily mopping, intensive mopping, or deep mopping. Pick and choose which preference you prefer. Accessory usage, we have a nice breakdown here 
of the life of every accessory and when it's time to repair, reorder, replace. We have our auto add detergent. So it's smart enough to sense once we install that detergent module, then we can toggle that on. AI recognition, we can to toggle that on or off. And then we have our pet environment. If we have pets, it'll recognize your pet faces and take evasive action. So it'll stay away from those areas to not disturb your pet. Here's the option right there. Moving right along, robot management, child lock, do not disturb, resume cleaning mode. That's gonna be where basically it'll return to the dock to charge and then continue cleaning. Collision avoidance mode. So basically it'll reduce collisions with walls, furniture, things like that. Remote control option right here if we wanna drive it ourselves, And we have a locate my robot. I am here. We get a prompt that says I am here. Then we have more functions, so time zone notifications, voice and volume, choose your language, lots of languages, unit of area, square feet or meters. Then we have general settings, device name, location management. If you wanna share this device with somebody, you can do that. Intelligent scene set up here with your other smart devices. There's the firmware update, help and feedback, and then we have some more settings right here. Plug-in version number, security settings, legal info, and add home screen shortcut. Also at the very bottom, we can delete the device. So that's a brief look at the settings. Then we're back into the main interface here where you'll notice we have our cleaning area, runtime, and battery percentage. Then we have our cleaning modes. So pick and choose, vacuuming and mopping, suction settings, dampness of mop pad, and then once we have our map set up, we can customize our clean and choose a cleaning sequence. So multiple options. We'll just toggle through them. Pick and choose what you desire. Then we have our self-cleaning settings. So clean mop pad, self-clean, toggled on or off. Choose by area. You could adjust it from 10 meters up to 35 meters or by zone. Then we have our water mount for washing mop pad. Choose what you want. Dry mop pad, drying time, two, three, or four hours. Auto empty settings here, if you want to toggle that on or off. And then the frequency. So that's nice. And then down here, we have our map. Once it's populated, you won't have the start fast mapping button anymore, but your map will be visible here to see all your different rooms or zones. We have our play button to activate to start cleaning when we want. We can view our map here once it's set up, and we do have multi-floor mapping support. If you want to take this upstairs, downstairs, multiple rooms, houses, things like that. And then we have our return to charger right here. So currently we returning are charging, station. but we get that prompt letting us know it's returning to the base station. So that's a quick look at the app. Now let's go ahead, let's let it map, and also let's let it clean.
We got our first clean out of the way. Let's check out the results. So first up, you'll notice we have our dustbin right here and ta-da, it's empty. This does have a self-emptying base and it was able to successfully get everything out of the dustbin. There's a couple pieces of remnants in here. It's really just fine dust particles. That's really all that's left. I don't see any large chunks, pieces, or anything like that. So you might get a slight collection still around the edges of some dust and dirt. Again, that's going to be really, really fine. You'll see what the inside looks like as well. A little bit of dust and dirt and crumbs there too, as you would expect. Let's flip it over to reveal the main brush roller. No tangles or anything like that. That's great to see. Keep an eye out though. You wanna make sure that there's never any hair or things wrapped around it. Same with the side cleaning brush. The mopping pads are nice and damp still. I tried to intercept it before it did a full clean. So you can get an idea for what it's gonna look like. Now, typically on a Robovac, you'll have a pad. That's the equivalent of basically just wiping your floor very gently with like a paper towel. This is gonna give you a much better clean. It's actually gonna agitate when it's rotating and spinning. So you'll see better results with a design like this versus a regular mop. It's not gonna replace you like getting on your hands and knees and scraping, cleaning, mopping, and doing all that, but it's gonna be much closer to that than your typical RoboVac mop. So I'm a big fan of the spinning design and having that agitation to really help remove some stains, dirty pet paws, things like that. And then lastly, I brought the vacuum bag here. Maybe you can peek inside and see some of the collected contents from that dustbin right there, but you'll have plenty of room in this bag. It'll last a long time. Obviously, it'll be um, shorter if your house is really dirty or you have it running very frequently and often but you kind of get the idea there what it's capable of doing and so far so good. Back in the app, I wanted to show you what it looks like after that first clean with the map populated. It did a fantastic job mapping here, labeled everything itself and it got everything correct. You can tweak and edit as needed, but in our case, it labeled the bathrooms just fine, got all the different rooms, corridor, all that good stuff all on its own. So now we have zone options, right? So you can pick and choose a zone right here. You can have it clean everything or you have different room options and up to three times to clean the rooms or the zones right there. Also, we can edit the map, right? So we have the map option here. We have a couple different versions, right? How do you want to display it? What do you want to show? Do you need to rotate it? Yes, if you've noticed too, it does have flooring material for you. And again, it has it correct for us right here with the carpet and our hard floor and surface. So back within the map setting, we have a 3D map option too. This will be really cool. So that's gonna load and we'll see a nice 3D layout of everything right here. How cool is that? So awesome. They have little furniture as well. You can decorate it if you wanted to do that here. So you can really go all out however you want. You can adjust walls, things like that. I think it's cool, but I don't personally spend a lot of time within the 3D map settings. But on our map one, we have our no-go zones right here. They show you what everything means, how to use them. But basically we have a virtual wall. We can rotate that, extend it or shrink it. No-go zones. Maybe there's an area with shoes, decorations, cords, things like that. You just never want it to go by. And then we have a no mop zone. Maybe there's just an area on the floor, same thing. You just don't want it to ever mop there. Maybe you have a rug runner, things like that. You can set up that right from within the app. And then going back in, you'll also notice we have our multi-floor map option down below. So we can set this up for multiple maps. Just toggle that button on. And I'll also show you really quickly, we have our editing buttons here for the area. If you do need to make any changes, you can do that. You can merge, split, rename, change floor material. Let's go back. And then we have that carpet editing option too. So if you want to add carpet somewhere, you can do that right here from within the map, that's great. Again, if you have a little rug runner, things like that, you can edit the area as you see fit. So a lot of customization options here to make sure the vacuum knows everything about your house to give you the best clean possible. Now let's put the vacuum through our cleaning tests.
right, here's a close up after two passes. I can still see some sand residue here, but I can't feel any of it, but I can tell that we have slight discoloration there. You will notice that there is a bunch of hair still. This rug and that hair do not get along. Look at that, amazing. So it's going to really stick in there and make it super difficult for any vacuum, whether it's a RoboVac or cordless vac, to actually remove it all. This will actually be one of the better cleans that you'll get with this vacuum, believe it or not. Because again, I can't stress enough how difficult it is to remove hair on this particular rug. The purpose of the hair test is really just to see what gets tangled in here. And look at that, we have no tangles there. But you'll notice we do have some hair on the mop pads. Amazing though, that's what we wanted to see here. No hair tangled in the roller. We did get some out of the roller though. But look at that, no tangles at all. Hard floor cleaning looks great. This is just after one pass. I did notice a little sandy area here that it missed. Got a hair on the floor right there. Some of that's hard because that side cleaning brush will actually hit some of that debris out of the way. So in the best case scenario, it takes the perfect approach the first time where it doesn't happen. But a lot of times when I'm doing tests like this, it would need to make multiple cleans to get everything picked up as opposed to just the first pass. But around your house, things like that, it's gonna be just fine because it'll have a routine going where it's gonna be able to get everything. And chances are you're not gonna have a house that's as dirty as you were just seeing for the floor right here. Here's a look at the bottom. You'll notice we still have some hair here. And looking on the inside, we actually have some hair collected on the roller brush right now. Look at that, so a little bit in that area you're gonna to wanna to watch and maintain in the future. And on this side, you'll see that we have some collecting as well. That's typically what you can expect. Depending on your make and model too, you might notice some hair tangled around here. Great to not see that. This is expected, but keep in mind too, you always want to flip this over every once in a while and maintain it properly. Cutting, clipping any hair that might be tangled here and just giving it some attention every once in a while. So larger objects like the charging cord and the screwdriver right there should get picked up with decent accuracy with the built-in AI. But unfortunately with our poop samples that were on the floor, they did get run over. So there's definitely some room for improvement there. So let's try to make sense of everything we've just seen from our everyday clean and the cleaning test that we put this vacuum through. Keep in mind all of these results and data, this is our own personal findings. They do not in any way represent the brand. It's not official specs or anything like that. We're just doing the best we can with what we have to try to look at everything from a factual standpoint to make comparisons versus just feelings and experiences. Nothing wrong. We'll be sure to share our experience, but we also want to provide you with some data to make the best decision for your needs. So first up, we have our max suction power test right here. The L10 S Ultra has one of the highest scores we've ever seen at 5,300 PAs. That's well above the average within Dreamy's own lineup of 4,217 PAs and substantially above average in regards to about the 30 units that we've tested that come in at an average of 3,100 PAs. Next, we have our max CFM score, just like our previous value that we looked at with our suction power, the higher the better, but it doesn't always indicate the best clean possible. You wanna see it, 
but it really comes down to actually putting it through some tests to see how good of a job it does because it can say one thing and have that particular metric but how does it actually use everything it's been given so to speak so we have a max cfm of 7.8 that's actually below dreamy's own average within the maybe five or six units that we've reviewed that come in at 9.3. But the good news is we still are above average at 6.9 CFM across all units that we've ever tested. Deep cleaning is a better metric in my opinion. This is a test that we conduct on our own where we basically embed 20 grams of coffee grounds in the carpet and we measure the dustbin before and after and we see the results right here. Dreamy is basically near perfect every time when we conduct this test. Doesn't matter their lineup. They all do a really good job deep cleaning and carpet. So in this case, the L10S Ultra got a perfect score. I was really relieved to see that, especially since our CFM test was a little bit lower than I was expecting. I thought for sure with our 5,300 PAs of suction, we'd also have one of the highest um, CFM tests, but that was not the case. But in this case, we still performed at the top of the pack with a perfect score. You'll notice within this test, the average is 17 out of 20, so not too bad, but you really wanna see it 18, 19, really 19 or 20, especially if you're gonna pay a good amount of money for a top of the line Robovac, you don't wanna score any lower than 19, because I would say at that point, it could just be a fault of our test, and you'd probably get that perfect clean anyways. Next, it's time for our decibels test right here. So the L10S Ultra got a score of 68.4 decibels. The lower, the better in this case, because that's gonna mean that the unit is quieter. This test is always conducted using the max suction setting. Across Dreamy's lineup, you'll notice that we are on the quieter side, which is great. And we're right neck and neck with the average tested. Next, battery life. This is measured in minutes. I would argue that this particular spec, it does and doesn't matter. It matters most if you have a very simple Robovac that doesn't have the function to go back home, recharge, and resume cleaning. If that's the case, then yes, this matters. And it matters because depending on your square footage, you want to make sure that it can get everything clean before its battery dies. That's not an issue with our particular vacuum, but they still give you plenty of juice. 210 minutes of runtime the average for Dreamy is 175, so it is above average. But again, this is one of their top of the line models, so that should be expected. And we're way above average of just 126 minutes. One of the reasons why we have such great runtime and battery life is the battery capacity. Doesn't always mean it's going to last longer, but typically if you have a larger battery, you're gonna have more juice to power a device and it's gonna run longer. But there's a lot of efficiency stuff, a lot of engineering things that's way above my head. But anyways, 5,200 milliamp hour capacity. The dreamy average is actually 5,400. It's technically below average, but that factors in a 6,000 milliamp hour battery for one of their dedicated mops that still technically does some vacuuming, which is why we included it. But all of Dreamy's RoboVax outside of that mop first and then vacuum model all have 5,200. So I'd say it's actually average and it's really the only option that you have, but it's skewed up because of that 6,000 milliamp hour battery. And you'll notice with our average tested, we're well above average in battery capacity at 5,200 versus basically 3,200. Heights very average here. So 3.8 is a typical height for any of these Robovacs, regardless of brand, as long as they have LiDAR navigation. Typically it's 3.8, maybe 3.9. And that's our average here. All of Dreamy's Robovacs have the exact same height. The average tested is 3.5 because there are some slim models out there that we've reviewed that don't have LiDAR navigation and they're made to be a little bit smaller to get under some furniture in those hard to reach areas. But typically you'll see anywhere between 3.5 to 4 inches with some of the lowest ones being at like 3 inches and maybe a smidge lower. Bin capacity is another metric that does matter if you have a very simple Robovac that doesn't have a self-emptying base. Since this unit has a self-empty, it's really kind of an obsolete metric here. But I want to point out that typically you'll find with self-emptying base units, you'll have a lower bin capacity because they can go back home and empty their load whenever they need to. Whereas if you don't, you're going to have a higher bin capacity so they can make sure that it doesn't clog and it can get through at least one clean around your house. So 350 milliliters, not bad, not worrisome or anything like that. Even though the average for Dreamy's lineup is 458. Again, that's because they have some models that don't have the self-emptying base and they're going to skew that up because they're going to 
going to have a larger bin. Of all the vacuums, with or without a self-emptying base tested, we're showing an average of 422 milliliters. So again, skewed higher because a lot of models don't have the luxury of going back emptying the base and resuming with a clean tank capacity. This is a really interesting stat too, because again, we cover a lot of models that do and don't have water tanks. So the L10S Ultra says online, they only have an 80 milliliter water tank. We can't verify that because there's no way to actually see the tank, but across Dreamy's lineup, this is with units that do and don't have water tanks. We have 182 milliliters for the average water tank capacity. So we're below that. But again, with this vacuum, it can actually go back home, refill as needed. So just like everything else in regards to, you know, bin size, water tank size, it's kind of obsolete for this model because you have such great features of being able to go back home and refill as needed. Average tested is 175 milliliters. So again, that's gonna be mostly units that consist of just a mopping module where you fill the tank yourself, where you're gonna to need to have that extra water because you're doing it. So now let's talk about cost. For this L10S Ultra, this is one of the high-end Lamborghini Ferrari Robovacs that's available on the market today. So we only compared it to other similar findings and offerings from, well, maybe you guessed it, Roborock, and Ecovacs. And in that case, this unit comes in cheaper than those options. And we're getting all of the same features. They all kind of do a little bit of shuffling and mixing and matching with what they offer. Ecovacs model doesn't have the ability to raise up the mop pads off the carpet. This unit does, but the Ecovacs model does have camera access. You can do a home patrol and actually see in real time what your house is like as it navigates, which I think is really cool. I'm hoping maybe that comes in the future with the L10S Ultra, but we are actually on the more affordable side of things for a premium Robovac like the L10S Ultra. So after using the Dreamy L10S Ultra, let me share with you my final thoughts. This is the best of the best that Dreamy has to offer, and I'm really pleased with this unit overall. Basically, it merges their Z10 Pro robot vacuum cleaner with self-emptying base and their W10 robot mop that technically still has some vacuuming, but it's a self-cleaning mop. It's not a self-emptying vacuum. Merges that together, and voila, now we have this beautiful device here. This has everything you've come to expect on the top of the line robot vacuum models that's out there. 3D vision, LiDAR navigation, self-emptying, as well as self-cleaning and refilling for the mopping module. And we have the better mopping module, in my opinion, that actually has scrub brushes there. So with that being said, there are things I'd wanna see improved and changed with this device in the future. The first one is really just honing in that 3D vision. I wouldn't say this has the best 3D vision. It was able to survive most cables, tools, toys, things like that. But any of the pet poop samples, things like that, it did run them over. So I'm hoping that can be refined in future software and firmware updates, assuming they even do any. But in the past with Dreamy products, they never had multi-level mapping and that came with the future update. So you didn't have to like buy a new vacuum just to get that feature. They made them more useful over time. So I can hope that that would be the case with this in the future, but buy it with the expectation that it's nice to have the 3D vision, but it's not gonna be completely accurate. So just keep that in mind. You're gonna wanna tidy up your house, make sure your pets don't have accidents, things along those lines. Also, I wanna point out with this particular vacuum, it's missing a feature that I've really come to enjoy on the Ecovacs X1 Omni. It takes advantage of its camera there and actually gives you a live view and you have like a home patrol setting. So if you hear a noise late at night, maybe in your bed, you don't wanna get up, you can just turn your vacuum on, it'll drive around the house to preset locations and do a nice scan and check everything and you can watch in real time. So not only is it a cleaner and a tool around your house, it also starts to become a home security device, making it that much more useful and practical. I really wanted to see that feature on here. Maybe again, that could come with the future software update. The good news is all the things I'm suggesting and want to see improved theoretically could be done over the air with software as opposed to having to buy a new device with new hardware. But it's really, really hard to critique this because it's one of the most affordable top of line vacuums compared to Ecovacs and Roborock. Also, I want to point out 
eh, call it a shortcoming with this one is it's really great that we have these pads that go up and down. So when we're on carpet, it does pull them in and up a little bit, but it's not enough to keep it completely off of at least my carpet here, which I'd say is a very average carpet. It's not super shaggy or anything like that. So maybe in the future they can refine that a little bit more to really have maybe like an inch or half an inch of gap when it's over the carpet so you're still not making contact. So that's better than Ecovax, but I'd say it's gonna be not as good as the Roborock competitor. So each of them has a little bit of a give and take in what they're capable of doing. They all have like the core same set of features, but Dreamy gets the leg up due to its price. So if you're okay with some of the stuff that I just mentioned there, and you're looking for a vacuum in this price point with these features, this is gonna be my top choice due to saving you a couple hundred dollars. And that's not even with this vacuum being on sale or anything like that. So solid app, great features, obviously some rooms for improvement as you'd expect with any device but overall highly competitive with what it's offering. Lastly, I wanted to mention too, that on the base station for the unit itself, there's no built-in cable management. I'd like to see that incorporated better into the future. So if you're like myself, where you wanna have it plugged into an outlet and have the base in front of it, there's just a big gap that I don't think has to be there if you design the unit in a way to be flush with the wall or at least close enough to the baseboard and trim. So you just have a really tiny gap there versus a couple of inches.